Coach, Fran Fisher just got a uh, Lifetime Achievement Award with the uh, Hall of Fame. Kind of reflect, uh, I know you go back with him a little bit and what a great choice that is by the Hall of Fame to kind of have him as the first recipient and most likely to uh, the award be named after him. Well, I, I don't think he could do it. Anybody's done more for the whole radio, television, media, and the, his, his, his style. You know, he's, he was unique and he was easy uh, to listen to and the whole bit. And, you know, he, he was a radio guy over in Lewistown, then he came over here and, gee, he was always available, never, never obtrusive, uh, knew what he was talking about, uh, and obviously had the kind of speaking voice and uh, the ability to to uh, think about things and put them in perspective. So I think he's a, it'd be very tough to think of anybody deserves it more than he does. He had some uh, fun stories, you know, when you were just starting with the uh, program <laughs> and things where amazingly, you know, Jim Tarman and you had to barnstorm the stake. And it's hard for us to kind of put a finger on that now considering how big the program was, but to think there was a barnstorming day to try and sell Penn State football. Oh, well, Fran was a big, big help. We used to go around alumni associations. I won't tell you some, how late we stayed some nights playing cards and <laughs> well, how much beer we drank or anything like that, but uh, we, Jim and uh, Fran and I have had a lot of good times. Uh, and in the process, uh, we we had a product we really believed in. Uh, we told, used to talk all the time about what could be here. We, if we could just get a few more people interested. We could just generate a little bit more money. We could generate a little bit more people identifying with our team. And Fran was a big, big asset to that because he had the ability to communicate to people. And he, and he, he so many times we'd go to different things and have questions and answers. And I mean, uh, we'd have questions and one of us would answer it. And I mean, I'd be amazed how many times questions were directed to Fran. And Fran would always, if he could, pass them off to Tom and he'd pass them off to me, <laughs> if they were tough ones. <laughs> Yeah, you know, one thing we uh, did with him too, Joe, was uh, talking about Jim Tarman, the TV quarterbacks, and I know you kind of uh, very close to him. Maybe one of the more underrated contributors to the success of Penn State athletics, and that's something he talked to us about. Well, I think he was underrated. I think our TV quarterback was, had a big deal to, to do with, uh, with the fact that we were able to create the kind of interest that we now have in our all of our athletics, uh, and he was always interested in. He was it was just not football with Fran. He was interested in almost all the uh, sports we had, uh, and TV quarterbacks was a great outlet for us. And he could he we could tell stories about some of the incidents. He probably told you the Albert Vitiello story about what college he was in. And I kept asking, now, what college in Penn State? He says, no, I mean, what college? Penn State. <laughs> you know, and, and Fran was trying to find out uh, if he was in communications or he was in business or something. But we, you know, we, we got together and tomorrow we start talking. We, would, we could go for a couple of days talking about some of the great things that happened on that show. And he said, good luck in the Ivy League, right, when you were just getting this started in the late 60s. He goes, no, we're Penn State and things. It's just amazing, you know, the identity where it was then to what it is now. Oh, well, that's exactly right. And, I, and I, again, there, I think Jim Jim and, uh, and Fran, are two, they were two great personalities. I mean, it was, and I don't mean just personalities in the sense that... Uh, Oh, they were celebrities. I, they they were genuine, fun guys, and people liked to be around them. Uh, newspaper people liked to be around them. We used to have a Friday night get together all the time, you know. And uh, I'd go for a while before a ball game, and 
A Fran and Jim would entertain those guys till I don't know how late because I couldn't stay up with them. We had, had a coach the next day, although some people figured maybe if I stayed up, I would have done a better job. I don't know. Uh, but but they were they were more than but they were more than personalities. I mean they we they were com. I, I, it's hard to you know there's, there was more there was a commitment there. There was a uh, a crusade to 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 make the place something special. And I I think to, to uh, we a couple of things we wish we had done. But overall, I think it's been uh, thanks to them we've been successful. Final question. Fran always told me his fountain of youth is something to look forward to. I ask you the same question as you start <laughs> another season and things. Is uh, is that something that kind of drives you a little bit as you move forward? Something hey. to look forward to? I mean, that keeps you young and energetic, getting with kids, oh, that sort of well, thing. I New ball the whole club. Program and, and uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think Fran should have retired. And I don't think Jim should have retired. I think uh, they, there wasn't anything they wanted to retire to. Now, Fran, as opposed to Jim, Fran kept active in radio and television and did some commercials. But Jim kind of just, you know, he's kind of let things, he took on a different lifestyle. Fr uh, Fran's, and Fran's still, uh, you know, right now, Fran's very knowledgeable about a lot of different things that are going on. And, Athletically, we're a time Jim isn't right now. So I think that the uh, staying with some things and, and keeping interested has had a lot to do with the, uh, the kind of physical condition and mental condition that uh, Fran's in, because he's still amazing.